This episode is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. It's a special thing to be a member of Navy Federal because they are a member-owned, not-for-profit credit union that invests in its members with amazing rates and low fees. That's why members could earn and save more every year. Plus, they serve all branches of the armed forces, veterans, and their families. So if you're interested in becoming a member, learn more at NavyFederal.org. At Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Insured by NCUA. Bring home Napoleon. Destiny has brought me here. The action epic from acclaimed director Ridley Scott. What is your name? Napoleon. You are the greatest leader in the history of the world. Witness the rise. You are nothing without me. Of the legend. Starring Academy Award winner Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Napoleon. Buy or rent on digital now. Rated R. Episode 162 is episode 69, Creating a Minimalist Schedule. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Mm. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And if you are listening to this on your ride to some sweet Memorial Day getaway Mm -hmm. or some kind of pool or beach party, good for you. Mm. Mm. Being outside in the sun, eating hot dogs. (laughs) Imagine that I am with you doing all those things and that we are... We are frugal friends vacationing together. I would eat a hot dog while we recorded this if it if you wouldn't have to hear me chewing. Absolutely. They're so I'm I'm a hot dog fan. Like I know this is not relevant to the podcast, but I Travis doesn't like hot dogs. I love hot dogs. I love hot dogs. It's why we're friends. Thank you. Thank you. Not a lot of people do. Minimalist schedule. Those two. So when you create a minimalist schedule, you have more time. For vacations and hot dogs. So true. But <laughs> so today we are replaying one of our most listened to episodes from 2019 on creating a minimalist schedule. Because really, in all seriousness, when your schedule is simple and only includes the things you value, then you have more brain power, more cognitive function to be able to make better decisions outside of your schedule. And a lot of those times, those decisions involve spending. And so it can save you money. So this is a really important aspect to frugality. I like the idea of relating some of these common themes that we talk about to a lot of different aspects of our lives and lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Of course, we talk about a minimalist home and what it means about things, but it's really neat to kind of correlate those concepts into other parts like our schedule, just how we manage our time, energy, emotions, attentions. That does have to do with this overarching theme of minimalism. So excited to replay this for you all. And definitely last year would not have been a good time to replay this episode, but I feel like as summer approaches and we are about to be doing more things again, that we just take the time and be like, yeah, it's okay to make up for some lost time, but like, let's not get crazy, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's remember um, the principles that saved us so much money in 2020, and let's try to, instead of going in the opposite direction and totally rebelling, let's just find some like good, happy, radical middle. We could find ourselves on the other extreme of that pendulum for yeah, sure. For 2020 sure. was for nothing. Sure. 2020, 20, 2021 is everything. Everything. <laughs> so we're not here for that. We are here for our sponsors, though. Mm. <laughs> and all seriously, if we can say we're here for two people, it's for you and for our sponsors. And the first of those is the Frugal Friends Workbook. The flash sale is back If you're counting, we only do it like three or four times a year. So if you have been thinking about getting the Frugal Friends Workbook, if you heard us talk about it, then this is the time to get it. So this is a digital workbook with six week-long challenges that help you improve your finances, but it turns it into a game. So you will get 60 pages of teaching and implementation guidance 
on challenges ranging from decluttering and increasing your income to having healthy conversations about money. Um, And so while it can be completed on your own, it's created to be gone through in pairs or small groups. That's why every purchase comes with two downloads. So if you want to take advantage of this sale, um, it is available for this coming week only. Head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash workbook to learn more and you will get 40% off with no code needed. That's frugalfriendspodcast.com slash workbook. Also brought to you by Bonbons. We're still not entirely sure what they are, but we hear you will be able to just sit around and eat them uh, as we learn to create a schedule that works for us and serves us. Bonbons, the candy choice of those with lots of free time. I think it's candy. Maybe it's cake. What is a bonbon? I feel Haven't like you ever cho- heard like, like it would be chocolate. Just sitting around eating bonbons. I have heard that before. And yeah. you're right. Who does know what a bonbon is? <laughs> yes. That's so interesting. Well, maybe you don't have a lot of free time if it's not your candy choice. <laughs> so true. Truer words have never been spoken, Jillian. True words never spoken. Mm. So let's get into this episode because I know you don't have a lot of time either. But if you wanted to queue up some other episodes to play after this, a few that are in line with this topic are episode 32, The Meaning in Minimalism, our interview with Joshua Becker. That one was really good, one of Jill's favorites. Mm, You know it. Episode 59, Creating Soulful Simplicity with Courtney Carver. That was also really good. And then episode 127, How a No-Spend Month Can Help Your Finances. And that one is really good because it can help you detox from everything. So detoxing from your not just spending money, but also like going out so much because sometimes the things you're going out for can cost you money. So when you take all those things out of your schedule, you're kind of left with thinking about what do I actually value. So that can be really good for detoxing your schedule. So cue those up, 32, 59, and 127. But first, let's get into this episode. Do it. We've got this one from Slow and Happy. I got to think about that for a little bit, but I won't do it now. Slow and happy. Mm. And they talk about ways to optimize your daily schedule through implementing minimalism. And I really like how they mention that it's not just about things. And we've talked about this before, Mm -hmm. but I think it's still a good reminder because sometimes I can get caught up in that. And even my use of the term minimal, when I go to somebody's house and they don't have a lot of things, I say... Look at how minimal you are. And that is true, but it is beyond how much or how little we own and bleeds into all other aspects of life also. So we want to look at that, the ways, the peripheral impact of that, how we can incorporate this concept into our schedules and lifestyle. So the first thing that this article mentions is that A minimalist schedule can free you from wasting time on excessive things or things you don't care about, which in some ways is connected to actual tangible things, that the less you have, the less time you are spending cleaning, taking care of, maintaining, repairing, all of that. So it is Mm -hmm. worth considering what you have and whether you need to have those things so that your schedule can free up a bit more for the things that you actually want to fill it with. I, know, I love how she mentions like, how much time do you spend caring for your indoor plants? And I'm like, none. That's why they all die. Yeah. So it's it's things that you don't really think about that play into your schedule and just take up so much of your time. And if you are not spending time on them, then you're spending time stressing about them like I do about indoor plants. It was an odd example. I didn't really resonate right. with it. And I will say for some, it's what gives you joy of having mm-hmm. live things in your house, but can can get hoarderish at times. <laughs> Take that concept and apply it to other aspects. What are you spending a yes. lot of time on? And do you want to be spending time on that? Yes. In the same vein, a minimalist schedule frees you from spending time on things that don't work. So 
stepping back and identifying the things in your life that you have been doing and not just doing them for the sake of finishing or continuing. Like we have been conditioned to think that if we start something, we have to finish it or we have to keep doing it, but really taking time to assess whether these things are working. And a lot of business owners will do that. They'll take time to assess what's working in the business, what's profitable, and they will stop doing the things that aren't working or profitable. And we should be doing the same thing Mm -hmm. uh, in our own life, like obsessing, assessing like, is this giving me joy? Is this bringing me life? Is this furthering my goals? Mm -hmm. Uh, And if not being able to say no to it. Constantly evaluating that just like how you would reevaluate or revamp your budget every month. Mm -hmm. Also, Living a minimalist lifestyle can create space to enjoy tasks. So again, this is the the both and. The impact of having fewer things surrounding you also creates mind space, emotional space to be able to engage in tasks in a richer way. So they give the example of even like a home office. If it's not cluttered, you might be able to more so focus on what what's at hand, what you need to be doing. And I think we've even talked about this in our digital minimalism episode of how much freer you can be to engage in what you need to engage in if your space is one that you want to be in. And Mm -hmm. I, I know for me, the state of my house although it's not a house, my home, <laughs> the state of my my vehicle that I live in is reflective of where I'm at kind of emotionally. If it's super cluttered, then I am super cluttered. It is harder for me mm-hmm. to get things done than if it is clean and organized to some degree. So keeping that in mind that if you are having trouble making the most of your time, take a look at your surroundings and figure out do I need to eliminate some of this stuff so that I can do what I need to do? Yeah. And sometimes you will have a big task, like a big clean of your house or something, but then maybe breaking it up into sections so that it doesn't feel so daunting, Mm -hmm. like 30 minute or singular tasks can also be a way to not dread the task when it comes up, Mm -hmm. but to enjoy it. And at at least if you don't enjoy it, to make it pleasant and so you feel good after you finished your one task instead of just guilty for not doing it all at once. And then the last one on this article is that a minimalist schedule reduces distractions. And she references two books that I really like, um, Essentialism by Greg McCown and The One Thing by Gary Keller. So essentially working on one thing or minimal amounts of things um, reduces distraction and eliminates like goal competition to where a bunch of good things are competing for your attention and none of them gets done instead of just focusing on a few important things so they don't compete yeah. with each other. That is interesting. I have heard of a few people that it seems to work for to be doing a bunch of things kind of all at once. I think it's a little bit of a misconception. We can't actually yeah. do a bunch of things all at once. But moving from thing to thing, I, but I do think that the general rule of thumb is that most people do well to focus their attention in one area, complete that task, move on to the next. Um, but I don't want to lose the outliers in this situation who who do kind of need something to break it up and and have a bit of those brain breaks, if I can say it in that way, and uh, yeah. kind of be bouncing around yeah, a bit. for sure. I'm writing a lot about this. I'm writing my next book that I'll be publishing on Amazon, Ooh. and I'm writing a lot about goal competition and ways to effectively achieve, in my case for this book, paying off debt by eliminating other goals that you may want to have in tandem with that one goal. So excited for that uh, one. Really? Yes. It uh, sets me on fire to read stuff like this because I'm really excited about it right now. Mm -hmm. But we must, we must move on. We mustn't dwell in just the reason why you should have a minimalist schedule, but maybe some ways to achieve that. And this next article is five steps to declutter your schedule and live your desired life. 
and it's on Joshua Becker's website, Becoming Minimalist. And we had him on the show a while ago. It was such a treat to get to talk to him. He's like one of the godfathers of minimalism and he's such a good guy. Uh, And he didn't write this post, but it's on his website. Mm -hmm. So I will love talking about it. Yeah, super good insight on how to aim at decluttering your schedule. And the first thing that they mention is to acknowledge the fact that you can't do everything. And my goodness, is this so important? Yes. In that we all have capacity and we may see that it's different for everybody, which it is. My capacity is different from yours, but we still cannot do it all. We don't have unlimited options. And I I think it's a misconception to say time management because we don't actually manage time. Like we all only have 24 hours in a day. We manage ourselves Mm -hmm. in the midst of time. So acknowledging that, that I have 24 hours, how do I want to manage myself? What are the most important things that I need to be doing? What are the things that I need to eliminate? What do I want to spend time on? Because what can happen is that if we think we're unlimited or we don't have capacity or we're somehow going to get it all done, what can happen is we spend a whole lot of time doing the unimportant tasks, never getting to the important tasks and become super frustrated that we just can't seem to get this done. So first step, acknowledgement. It always is, right? (laughs) So yes, instead of mm -hmm. trying to get everything done, just create fewer things to get done mm-hmm. because we've recognized Ugh. that we're we're not going to be able to do it all. So I love that. Don't love take that. off your cape, your superwoman cape. I love the one less thing you have to launder. Yeah, the video compilation <laughs> on The Incredibles. I believe it was the first the first movie where it was all of their capes sucking them into dangerous things you know like lose the cape (laughs) i kind of think about that with this like you can't do it all you're not superman you're not superwoman lose the cape it gets at people in trouble anyhow and then move on to to point number two yes and that is clarify what's most important to you so not to your family not to your spouse not to your friends Mm -hmm. what's most important to you and so step back because it may not be the things that you think are important to you. There may be the things you think should be important to you. So just observe like what kind of person do you want to be? What relationships are most important to you? And what do you want to accomplish? And find clarity in these three things. And that will tell you the things that should be in your schedule. So once you understand This is another book, Start With Why, from Simon Sinek. It's directed at business owners, but it says when when businesses start with the why and base their marketing around it, that's what sells people. So Mm -hmm. if you start with the why, like what are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals? What relationships do you want to nurture long-term? And what kind of person do you want to be long-term? That's going to tell you what to include in your schedule and things that don't help you get there can be eliminated. Mm -hmm. I love this article because I think it is causing us to reflect on just important life things that we should all be reflecting on anyhow, regardless of whether or not we're trying to get at a minimalist lifestyle. It's interesting. There's a lot of overlap. I, when, when Eric and I went away back in March, I wanted to take time to process and reflect on some of the things that have just had, had just happened in the last six months and look forward to what I want the future to look like. And there's a lot of similar questions that I went through in that process to what's listed out in this article. So I think an excellent exercise for anybody, I think it's next level to pause and reflect and process and plan for the future. I think that it requires a degree of maturity and ability to sit with our own thoughts but I think these, they not only say, how do we want to get out of frugal lifestyle, but just who, who's the person I want to be? What are the relationships I want to be a part of? I think it's, these are fantastic questions to ask and can help with whatever lifestyle you're trying to move towards. Yeah. The, the third thing to consider here is determine what you have to do to then live for those things. So once you've determined your whys, 
and answered some of the questions that Jen just went through, then kind of work your way backwards to say, all right, if I'm going to get at that, what are the steps that someone would need to take to do that? And this can help you to map it out, to figure out where your time will be best spent and identify the ways that aren't maybe currently working. Maybe your reality versus your perceived self is drastically different. So, okay, how do we course correct? How do we get back on track? What are the things that I thought would work that aren't working and I can begin eliminating and or incorporating new things to get towards that singular focus? And four is say no to other stuff that hinders you. I've taken all of the say no things Mm -hmm. for myself. It's not enough to know what things you should do And what things you shouldn't do, you have to be self-aware enough to say no to them Mm -hmm. out loud. And whether it's saying no to going out to eat with friends or saying no to an opportunity um, that might make you a little money, but you could do something that's more profitable with your time or doing something that just doesn't serve you like you don't find joy in, like it's just draining. So I grew up in the church and all the women were, you know, stay at home moms is very typical, very stereotypical. And so whenever anybody asked them to do anything, they always said yes I guess it was just that like mom guilt thing where they feel like if if I'm not working, I have to say yes to doing everything else and keep the house clean and have dinner on the table at six. Like I, I have to do everything. And I watched so many women burn out and they all looked so stressed. I guess I can't collectively say like like every single woman, but I just remember this really vividly. And so it's caused me in my adult life to really just say no up front, which also isn't healthy, like mm-hmm. to just immediately say no to things and then go back and say yes. But it really caused me to say no very generously because I didn't want to be the person that took on so many responsibilities and leadership roles that I couldn't invest in the things that really mattered Mm -hmm. to me. And this is a learned thing too. Saying no, Mm -hmm. again, across the board, it's useful in life. And it comes up against our boundaries, whether or not we have healthy or unhealthy boundaries and and a surety inside of ourselves of who we are and whether we feel comfortable or confident in our choices and ability to say no or to push back on ideas. So Exploring this topic will inevitably touch on so many other aspects of our lives that are worthwhile to explore and will help us in the long run. And so finally with this, number five is to figure out what motivates you. And I love how they word this. The the author says, study yourself and figure out what makes you tick. It sounds like an odd concept, but I love it. I think self-knowledge, self-understanding is so important. We often don't try to explore this to know what are my needs? What are my wants? Mm. What are my goals? How do I make sure that they're met so that I can, yeah, live out of a place of well-being? And so I love what he is encouraging us towards here. And this could include, I would Define this as what's life-giving. Like if we were to picture a jar of water, the things that deplete you or the things that you kind of dump water out on and the things that are life-giving to you or the things that kind of put water back into your jar. Both happen. Neither, it's not reality to have only a filled up jar or only a depleted jar, right? We're constantly Mm -hmm. pouring out or receiving being poured into. But to pay attention to what are the things that are life giving, what makes you tick, whether that they've listed out, maybe it's music or blogging or dancing or painting or singing or jogging or weightlifting, whatever it is, just something that you really enjoy that you can also incorporate into your time. And this will come along with as you find things to eliminate and say no to, this can be some of what you do fill your time with. Maybe not everything because it is important to give back, but this will help in feeling 
the benefits of a minimalist schedule and being able to incorporate things that actually matter to you and then having the space and capacity inside yourself to do the things that might be more difficult or draining at times. Mm -hmm. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett, and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix. Sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions, we hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. I can't fix this. I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved, or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the myasthenia, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can't ever have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And this is great if you are stressed about having too much in your life and you want to just step back, then you're going to resonate with this so much. If you're the type of person that thrives on going nonstop, which is for as much as I say no is actually me, I would encourage you to challenge yourself by really eliminating a good portion of your schedule if you can, because it's it's humbling and it's eye-opening the crutches that we use in our schedule to avoid more important things. Mm-hmm. And to take that step back and challenge yourself um, in this minimalist schedule can really be important moving forward, mm-hmm. not just in your stress level, but what you do financially, the things that you pay for and the things that you will not pay for. What are the ways for you, Jen, that minimalism has freed up your schedule a bit more or created even minimalism in your schedule? Oh, that's such a good question. So when I was pregnant, I had a few leadership roles Mm. and I um, specifically am in my church and I made the decision to step back from those and like leave all of those ministries because I wanted space and time before I had a baby to enjoy other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people were saying like, most moms will go right up until they're in labor and doing this stuff. And I was like, yeah, well, that's good for them. But I, I want the space to enjoy this season. And I'm glad that I did take that space. I don't regret it at all. And now that I have a baby, I don't get to be as productive or do as many things as I was. And so that's really humbling to just be stuck all day under an infant, uh, which is a blessing, but also for somebody who loves to go, 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 it's really hard. Uh, So I'm kind of taking these lessons Mm -hmm. for myself as well. Mm -hmm. How about you, Jill? Yeah, I've noticed. I think that this is something I have to work at. I'm not saying that my schedule could get easily filled. And so for me, it's a discipline to actually schedule times to rest. And you'll see that in my planner. 
Uh, there are days where I actually write the word rest so that I mm. don't schedule anything there. And for me, that's a boundary thing. And I don't feel the need to say, no, I can't. I'm planning on resting that day. I just say, no, I'm busy. If there is an invite yeah. or something that's going to happen that day. So that has been super freeing for me. And I have found even with some of the minimalist things that I have chosen, such as living in 170 square feet, I don't have as much to do, right? I don't have a yard. I have small, small space that takes me about 10 minutes to clean. So that I have found has freed me up a lot. And so the other night was a rest night. I could have filled it. Eric was out for the night and I pulled out my pencils and charcoal and drew. I have not done that in so long, but it felt so refreshing to be able to have mm -hmm. the room to do that. And I had the space to do that because in I'm in my home. I've created um, a, a minimalist lifestyle here where there weren't a thousand things tugging at me because it was clean because it took 10 minutes to clean. And then I was able to <laughs> enjoy my night. So I'm not saying that that is all day, every day, but I am enjoying some of the benefits of it, which is so fun for me. Yeah. Uh, and another thing that I just thought of when you were saying that is I gave myself, I scheduled a really solid maternity leave schedule. So like in, mm. I did not schedule a lot of things. I took a lot of, of time off. And then when I decided to go back and like take on some clients, because I had um, scheduled in so much rest, a client that I really wanted to work with approached me and I was actually able to take that and I had the time to take that because I had not rushed into overfilling myself with client work. Nice. So that's another perk about a minimalist schedule and scheduling and rest is that when these opportunities come up, you actually have the capacity. And when the really good ones come up, you have the capacity to to take them. Mm -hmm. You know what else we have the capacity to take? Ooh, we have freed up and created space within this podcast yes. to do something amazing. And that is the bill of the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jill. This is Layla from Vancouver Island in Canada. My Bill of the Week is my credit card bill, which I finally paid off in full this month. Now, I usually pay off most of my credit card bills, but I've developed a bit of a traveling addiction in the last two years, and that slowly racked up a bit of a leftover. So I decided to minimize my spending this past month and pay it all off in full, hoping to keep it that way and start budgeting more for my future travels, which may be a little bit limited because I work full-time as an economist by day and I'm a master's student by night. Here's hoping to pay off my student debt by the end of the year. Thanks and keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. I enjoy listening to your podcast. Thank you, Layla. That's so awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Layla. My goodness, you've got a full plate. So... Congratulations on paying off your credit card bill in full and good luck on paying off your student debt. We, it can be so difficult, <laughs> but uh, you could do it and we're here for you as your frugal friends. Layla, oh, that is so awesome. And I know that you will do more traveling in the future and it will feel even better when you're paying for it up front and it doesn't follow you home. And after you finish your master's and all that debt is paid off, it feels so mm -hmm. good. We're so proud of you, Layla. So thank you for leaving us a bill. And if you want to submit your bill of the week, visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill 
And please leave us something to get excited about because we get excited every single week. Yeah, we do. Never fails. (laughs) We love it. It's not old yet. Nope, it's not. It's not. It will not be old. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett, and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix. Sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions, we hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. I can't fix this. I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved, or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the myasthenia, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can't ever have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. We're an Instacart family. Oh my goodness, we saved so much time with same-day grocery delivery. So we joined Instacart Plus. And now we're saving more money. We get unlimited free delivery on orders over $35. 5% credit back on pickup. And a family account to shop together. Did you know members save $460 a year when they order at least once a week? I do now. See how much you'll save. Visit instacartplus.com for two weeks free. Average savings exclude membership fee. Individual savings may vary. Credit back excludes alcohol. Paid membership auto renews. Additional terms apply. Well, it's time for our next favorite segment that we've created space for. It's time for the lightning round. Round, round, round. You can leave us a comment in the uh, Facebook group if you enjoy our lightning round intros or if you hate them. Just don't leave a comment on the actual podcast that you hate them. Only if you love them. Yeah. Only in our Facebook group where it's safe. It's not It's yeah, not safe, safe on the review pages. Yeah. Anyhow, this lightning round, we're going to we're going to list off some things that you could give up for 30 days and try it out and see what that creates space for in your life. Yeah, you don't have to give up everything all at once, but if you want to just give it a try, wait in, see what it feels like, see what feelings come mm-hmm. up then to yeah, study some yourself. You can, yeah. Try, so, try it out. here you go. TV and or movies. So we all know that w- we can spend far too much time engaged in this form of entertainment because yes, it is frugal. You could spend or share a Netflix or Hulu account and then just binge yourself into oblivion. But we would argue for not doing that and doing something else Mm -hmm. with your time that's more enjoyable or life-giving or gets you closer to your goals. So try giving that up for 30 days and see what happens. Yes. This one is one that I am personally giving up for 30 days right now, and it's alcohol. Mm. So Didn't you just give it, that up for only, nine months? I know, but then I like binged a little after I could have it again. And I'm trying to get that baby weight off, mm-hmm. you know? So if somebody asks you to happy hour or out Friday night or something, this is a really easy way to say no to that. Just be like, hey, I'm just giving up alcohol for this month. Can't do it. And practice saying no subversively. Mm-hmm. So that's a really great way to save some money and also save yourself some time. Mm -hmm. You could also try giving up social media. So this could be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is that sucks you in and steals up time, probably more than you even know. And if you listen to our digital minimalism episode, you know that there's an actual way to track the real amount of time that you're spending on social media. So I'd encourage you to check that out and get the reality on how much you're spending time in these areas and whether or not that's what you want to be doing. So try giving that up and see what what you end up filling that with. Mm, Yes. And then the last one is shopping. So this can be online shopping, thrift store shopping, yard sailing, just giving up shopping for 30 days can give you a lot of time back. So you're not browsing Amazon. You're not searching for yard sales. You're not wasting time in the thrift store. Granted, like all these 
things are good, Mm -hmm. but you can definitely go 30 days without them. It's so interesting. Now that we are living in a small space, that I can't buy anything. I have what I need and I don't need anything else. So, but what I used to do in the spring, summer, even fall time is go yard sale shopping in, in, on Saturday mornings. It is fun to me, but I have found myself hardly doing that ever, which has been weird because it almost defined what I did on Saturday mornings just as an activity, but I inevitably would purchase things. So I have had to even shift habits based on living minimally. And what I found is, yeah, there's times when I miss the yard sales and I have twinges of remorse, (laughs) but it has forced (laughs) me to do even more life-giving things. So go to the park and find wildflowers and sit by the water and, or hang out with somebody who's important to me. So it's been really neat to see what other things interest me and the things that actually are rejuvenating to me. So I would definitely Mm -hmm. encourage that one. Even though, yeah, you can get great deals at thrift stores and yard sales. Sometimes you you don't need it and you might be able to find something better to do with your time. Yes. It gives you space to try new things too, which is highly underrated. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of trying new things or old things that are good things... It's still August and we're still doing a book club, which is which is a great way to spend your time reading. And we're reading something very worthwhile and fruitful, The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins for book club this month. So feel free to jump in on that wagon. Yes. And uh, it is a self-published book. So it is in a lot of libraries, but not all of them. So if you want a free copy of it, we are giving one away for every five reviews we get uh, sent to us this month. So to be entered into that drawing, leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, screenshot the review and send it to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we will select one winner for every five reviews we receive at the end of the month. And for an example of a really helpful review that Jen is shaking her head at right now, but it's coming at you because why wouldn't we? You know, one of our very own (laughs) left this review on the iTunes It's by Travis D087, which yes, full disclosure, this is Jen's husband, but he does actually listen to every single episode. He is actually a fan. So this is why I feel that we can read this podcast just for some pointers on on something that is helpful. Yeah, he wouldn't listen to it if he didn't like it. I know because there are a lot of things I wish he would do that he doesn't do. So it it just happens to be five stars because that's actually how he feels about it. And the title is, I'm in love with these ladies. That makes sense for one of us. Doesn't quite make sense for the other one. So we'll talk (laughs) about that later. But I love the tips they give. And I really love how Jen and Jill play off each other. I love listening to it on my way to and from work. It's informative and it makes me laugh. Thank you, ladies, for making my Fridays even that much more enjoyable. P.S. Jen, your voice sounds really cute. Want to get a $4.50 latte? Winky face. So <laughs> yes, that happened. A little bit of background for that happening is an unfortunate one-star review that we got recently. We talked about it, I think, on a previous podcast or an upcoming podcast. We did. Where they, um, they really used all of their words to tear us down. So this is just a really good reminder that we are real yeah. people. Uh, Even though it sounds like, you know, we are professional experts, almost robots, and we don't have real feelings. No. We do. And also, no, we're not claiming to be experts or professionals. We're just friends. So, yeah, I do write about personal finance for a living, but that just makes it easier for me to write these show outlines and find these Mm -hmm. headlines. Mm -hmm. So that's what it does for me. Otherwise... I'm in it with everybody else. We're we're all in this together trying to find better ways to spend money and spend our time. Uh, so yeah. that's that's where we're at.
Thanks so much for listening, guys. We love bringing these popular episodes back to you because every time we replay them, they continue to be some of our most downloaded episodes. So we love resharing them. And we also love it when you leave your kind reviews on iTunes and Stitcher like this one from F Trainer. Every episode is an inspiration and it is five stars. She says, these women have great ideas and relay them in such a relatable way. Their do what works for you approach leaves me feeling inspired to try their tips, change the way I think about finance and sometimes life, forehead sweat emoji, (laughs) and strive towards financial freedom. Thanks, Jen and Jill. Thank you. Thanks, F Trainer. And thanks for calling us women. Wow. (laughs) I feel full grown. Sometimes they call us valley girls in these. <laughs> Other times reviews. they call us ladies, but when I get called a woman, I feel full grown. So thank you. <laughs> we also want to thank our friends who share these episodes on social media. So when you share the latest episode and tag us on Facebook or Instagram, we're adding you to our monthly drawing. For every five tags and reviews we get each month, we're giving away a copy of the Frugal Friends Workbook. So. Yeah. Yeah. The flash sale is happening, but also you can try and win it. Yes. So keep leaving us reviews on iTunes or Stitcher, sending the screenshot to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to tag us on social. We see it. See you next week. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. Jill, what are you doing for Memorial Day? I am going to be back in Pennsylvania for a wedding. Fun. Yeah. Eric is in the wedding, which is exciting for him. Mm. Yeah. So because it's Memorial Day weekend, the wedding's on a Sunday. So Monday, we'll probably be returning Eric's tux. <laughs> so fun so fun right yeah. actually that makes me think hopefully the place is open to be able to return the tux they well, probably maybe you aren't can just slide it through the bottom of crack of the door oh maybe it's like he's the eric is thin place. enough to where it's like a not an, like not a lot of fabric so he can just slide it under the door or it'll be like a rental car place where you just like drop the keys in the bin just drop the tux in the box Yeah, and nobody will take it (laughs) because who steals a tux? Not me. Not this one. Not Not a full-grown woman. woman. (laughs) (laughs) It's like we're actually friends. (laughs) If you are a full-grown woman and you wear a tux, like that's cool. (laughs) Yeah, but Jill will not wear a tux. (laughs) I'm not going to steal a tux. That's different from wearing one. Oh, so sorry. I would totally wear one. I'm just not going to steal one. Okay. I just want to like Hashtag ethics. All right. Hashtag full grown. Okay. Bring home Napoleon. Destiny has brought me here. The action epic from acclaimed director Ridley Scott. What is your name? Napoleon. You are the greatest leader in the history of the world. Witness the rise. You are nothing without me. Of the legend. Starring Academy Award winner Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Napoleon. Buy or rent on digital now. Rated R. Need an easy button to feed your baby? Baby Bretza's Formula Pro Advanced makes a perfectly mixed warm formula bottle automatically at the push of a button. No air bubbles, no fuss. Literally, choose your temp, select your ounces, push start, and you're done. Works with virtually all formulas and bottles. Say goodbye to the 3 a.m. feeding chaos and hello to this revolutionary stress-free solution. Raising a baby is hard enough. Let Baby Bretza make feeding a breeze. Get your Formula Pro Advanced at babybrezza.com.